Today I'm going to explain how to make a pinhole camera. Um, step one is select your box. And so I just kind of went around and gathered a variety of different boxes. You can make pinhole cameras just about as small as you possibly can up to really, really large. Um, when I look for a box, I look for something that, um, first of all, I, I kind of look at the quality of the cardboard. So this box right here is corrugated. Um, I don't know if you can see that or not, but the corrugated cardboard um, has thin spots. And what I recommend is when you select a box for your pinhole camera, turn the flashlight on on your phone, go into a dark room, let your eyes adjust to the dark, and then shine the light through the cardboard. And what you'll see is that corrugated cardboard has thin spots. It's also not uniform. You'll have spots where the light comes through and spots where the light doesn't come through. Um, thin cardboard like this box right here, though it doesn't have, it's pretty uniform, it doesn't have thin spots, but overall it will allow a little bit of light to pass through. And the goal with the pinhole camera is that we can control light getting into this box. In its closed state, it should be basically 100% light proof. Okay, and this old box is not only really cool, but I tend to like boxes that have the slide on lid. Um, it does a couple things. It, it helps prevent light from coming into the box inadvertently through a crack or something. But this also has really thick, nice cardboard. And so when I took this into the dark and shined my light through it, I did not see any, any light penetration. And so this box would work really good. This is kind of the box that like uh, cards come in for a game or iPhone boxes work really, really well. Um, stuff like that where you have big heavy cardboard box that slides together. Okay, so once we have our box selected, the, the kind of tools that we're gonna need are <clears throat> a ruler helps, X-Acto knife helps, pair of scissors. Um, I use black construction paper. It, it has a matte finish and it seems to work really, really well. Uh, some sort of a glue. I have glue stick, Elmer's glue, and rubber cement. I opt for rubber cement most of the time. Roll of electrical tape. Eventually when we go to poke the pinhole, we need some sort of aluminum. I just take a pop can and cut it, and then I'll use that for my pinhole. Uh, sandpaper helps. I've also got these little photo corners which help hold our paper in there once we're done building our pinhole camera. So step one here is to black out the inside of this box. And I'll, in another video, I'll talk about kind of how this pinhole camera works. But one thing that we have to do is once we have a pinhole in here, you know, we're going to open up our little shutter that we'll build. We're going to allow light to come into the box. And we want to have as much control of that light as possible. And so when the light enters the box, it's going to come in contact with the walls, the, the paper that's in there. And we want to minimize the amount of reflection. As light comes in and it starts to reflect and bounce around, every little piece of light that's not absorbed will affect the quality of our image in the end. And so by blacking the inside of this box out completely with black paper, we minimize how much light is deflected once we're inside of there. And so I have a finished pinhole camera over here and you'll see that the inside of this box is completely matte black. Okay, so the easiest way to do this now, if you look at the way this box slides together, this entire side right here is gonna need to be black. And lots of times people think the same over here, but what you've gotta realize is when, when this slides in here, this edge is not going to be showing on the inside of the box. So really we need to do this surface right here. So one surface here and then all the surfaces inside of here. 
And so I'm gonna go ahead and do this and then it'll end up being fast motion until I'm done. Okay, um, got this sucker blacked out. Now it's kind of important that you let it dry for a while. The good thing with rubber cement is if you get any on the paper inside of here, I don't know if you can quite see that, but if, if you let it dry, you can just take your finger and just gently rub it off and it will um, kind of just come off in these little rubber blobs. And so the other thing that people sometimes get worried about and, and I guess it's worth uh, fixing is these corners right here. Um, there's a couple options for that. You can either use a piece of electrical tape to hit those little corners if you didn't cut perfectly or a Sharpie will work too. Um, depending on how thick the corners of the box are. If you think there's light that might penetrate those corners, you can use electrical tape. Um, if not, uh, Sharpie will work just fine. So I'll let this dry for a sec and then I'll come back and show you how to fix those problems. Okay, I've let my box dry for a little while and what you can see is I've got a couple little um, spots that the cardboard is showing and so like on an iPhone box this would be bright white it would definitely be a problem um, on this box I'm, I'm still gonna fix it and so handy dandy sharpie tool here and then I'm just gonna come in and um, black that out and so as I work on this here okay and that's pretty well blacked out now. Um, as I was working on this box here and I put some glue on it, I did notice that there was um, a thin spot in one of the corners. And so what I'm going to do to fix that thin spot is I'm going to tape these outer corners right here and that will shield this from light. And so we will go through a testing process with this pinhole camera, but um, during the construction phase here, if you see anything that is blatant, um, you know, where you have a hole or you have a, a real thin spot or something, make note of it so you can fix it uh, right away. And so I'm just going to tape this, these corners. An electrical tape works quite well. It doesn't allow light to penetrate through. Uh, it's not the most sticky stuff in the world, but, but it works. Sorry if there's a lot of background noise. For some reason, I'm, I'm in my classroom, but it also sounds like a frickin' jet taking off sometimes in here. I have had people wrap their entire pinhole camera outside in electrical tape. It's like a worst case scenario. If you can't get your box to stop leaking light, um, sometimes you can do that. I kind of feel like electrical tape is pretty expensive and so I definitely don't want my students doing that. I would go through a thousand rolls of electrical tape a year. If you're at home doing this, how much money do you have? If you wanted, you could just coat the outside of this with, with strips of electrical tape, like this. And, you know, just as long as I do the entire outside of this box, it's gonna just be an extra preventative measure for light getting in. And that's my basic pinhole camera construction. The next thing I'm going to show is actually 
cutting and installing the pinhole. I'm going to show how to cut the pinhole. Um, we've got to decide which, where we want to put it. Um, I like to put it on the bigger side just simply because I'd rather install the paper in here. Um, that's just my method. You really could put it on any side you wanted just as long as light can come through. But my rule of thumb is I put it on the, the lid side um, of the biggest side of the box. So the first thing I want to do is mark the center of this. So I'm just going to take a ruler. Okay, now that I have my X, I want to cut a hole right here in the middle. Uh, the, the size of the hole is dependent on the size of the piece of aluminum you have. I try to kind of cut these all at about one inch square, and so I would recommend like a half inch by half inch hole would be an appropriate size. So I'm just going to mark that off, and then I'll show you how to cut it. I have my hole marked, I'm going to come in with the X-Acto knife. Now this is a spot where you can definitely hurt yourself if you're not careful. I've had more people get hurt with one of these little things than just about any other tool that, that people commonly use. So just be very, very careful. And what I kind of recommend, I'm going to try to do this without getting my hand in the way, which is going to be challenging. Um, I, it, I recommend kind of a sawing motion so that I'm not going to, if you just push straight in, you run the risk of tearing the paper on the inside of the box. So a little bit of a sawing motion seems to help with that. And so there I have my hole cut. I'm going to go ahead and switch to the inside view. Okay, what you want to do is examine the inside and make sure that you don't have any scenario like this. This is what I was trying to prevent was that tear right there. Because uh, this will, as light comes through, it'll hit this. And then when it comes towards the back of the camera, you'll actually get a weird little shadow here. And so I, we got to get that out of there. Sometimes it's easier for me to come in from this back side and do a quick little trim here. I've got a little spot that I need to fix, but I don't have anything that's going to create a shadow. So I'll just hit that with a sharpie and then that edge is clean. If you want to hit this inside edge right here too with a sharpie, definitely won't hurt anything. Okay, the next step is to install the pinhole. Now I like to poke the pinhole before I put this on. And so the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and, and put that pinhole in. And I'm going to adjust camera so you can see this a little closer. Okay, the whole idea behind a pinhole camera, and you can watch my video on how a pinhole camera works, but the idea is that the pinhole has to be about as small as we can possibly make it. There is a point where it is so small that it's not realistic to get a picture during the amount of class time we have. But outside of class, you literally cannot have a pinhole that is too small. It's just gonna change your exposure time. And so I use um, a push pin, because we have lots of them. And you can see how the tip of that push pin is tapered substantially. When I punch a pinhole, I like to get in this zone right here. Just the very, very tip of that. If I punch in beyond here and up into here, I get a pinhole that is way too big. I recommend some sort of a rigid cardboard backing. You could use five or six sheets of notebook paper for this. I don't recommend corrugated because it could potentially bend and then we'll get a kink in our um, aluminum. And so when I come in and do this, I'm just going to push the very tip of that in. Okay. Um, now when you go and poke a hole in, it 
it doesn't remove material so it flares it out on this back side and I can feel this little burr. We want to get rid of that. So um, I'll take my sandpaper and I'm just going to go ahead and sand this. Uh, I'm not going to get super aggressive with it. You know, see that's now all scratched up. And I have different grits of sandpaper um, available. But sand it, and then what happens is it, it's going to kind of mess the hole up a little bit. And so what I'll do is I'll come back in and I'll re, I know this is very, very hard to see, but I'll adjust that hole size. Now what I'm doing is I'm twisting the push pin to make sure that hole is nice and round. And so I have a nice round hole and I can't feel it on either side. Back side. But I'll kind of switch back and forth between the two sides, do a little rotation. If I need to sand in between, if I can feel it, I'll definitely sand. You see my pinhole there, and um, I'm just putting my finger behind it so you can see that hole. And I know this is probably not quite in focus, but that hole should be perfectly round. If you see any little fuzzies or anything weird in there, um, fix it. Okay, now that I've poked my um, hole in my aluminum, I can install this on my uh, pinhole camera. You want to make sure that you look at it from the back side and center that hole perfectly in the middle. Go ahead and install a piece of tape on there. And I'll finish this up. You can see right there in the middle is my hole. Last thing I want to do is create a shutter flap for this. And because just like a normal camera, I've got to have a shutter. And so I'll take a piece of uh, electrical tape, tape it down, tape it right over the hole. And then on this tag end side, I'll fold this over so that I can easily open and close my shutter. So there it's completely taped down and closed and when I'm ready to open my shutter and take a picture I just peel this back out of the way and then it's it can take a picture and if I need to I can I can kind of stick this back here so that it stays open. We're gonna put light sensitive photographic paper in the back here to create our images and so I'll just go ahead and measure and figure out what size paper I'm gonna install in there. And so I'll just use my ruler here and measure. And I see this is about two and a half wide. Okay, I've cut my piece of test paper. I actually went a little bit smaller. I went down to two and a quarter by three and a half. Uh, and I got a nice number of sheets out of an eight by 10. And so now I'm gonna just install this in the back. Now you could just tape it back here. Um, the problem with tape is you don't always get it perfectly flat and it's not super consistent where it's placed in the back of the camera. Uh, I like to use these little teeny photo adhesive corners. Um, let me focus on that real quick. So they're just little sticky corners that you can uh, install into like a photo album or whatever. And you stick them on these outside corners here like this. of my test paper. And so I'll go ahead and stick all four of these on. Okay, once I have one on each corner and I've got the back peeled off, so now it's adhesive, I'll just take this um, portion of the box and I'll center this right in the back here. And then I'll use this piece of paper to help me stick in my corners perfectly straight. And I can go ahead and stick those little corners down. Now you can see inside of there, now my piece of paper is held tight. And now I can just install uh, paper really quickly and easily in the dark. Because I'm going to be doing this in the dark. Because this will be eventually 
light sensitive photographic paper. To test this thing, it is important to test it because if, if we don't run a good test, we don't know if our camera is light tight. Like right now, I think it will work, but the only way to test it is with some light sensitive paper. And so um, here at school, we go into the dark room and we can cut our paper and then install it into our camera in the dark. And so just pretend for a second that I'm in the dark room. If you're at home, you could do this in your bathroom and you want to black out all the outside light uh, that you have. So put a towel under the door, cover the windows. You can have a small amount of red light, which is safe, called safe light. Uh, and so you could just buy a, a red bulb that's very, very, very dim. Uh, you could also, <clears throat> excuse me, do this in pitch black. I mean, in complete 100% darkness, it's not that hard to do. Um, it's just up to you. Once you have your paper installed in a dark environment, make sure the, the light sensitive side is facing up. Then we'll close our pinhole camera, make sure our shutter is closed, and we'll come out into normal light, uh, you know, by a window. It doesn't necessarily need to be in direct sunlight or anything, but in a room that is lit uh, well. And then you just set your pinhole camera. And I usually say 10 to 15 minutes for the test. That paper is in complete darkness right now. And so after 15 minutes, we'll take it into the dark room, we'll develop our paper, and what we should get is a perfectly white piece of paper. Uh, if there's anything wrong with our camera, this might be slightly gray, and that means we're getting kind of overall light leakage into our box. Uh, that means a little bit of light penetrated enough to make the paper gray. Sometimes you'll get like a dot like that that's black, and that means there's probably a hole somewhere in your box that's allowing a, a little teeny ray of light to come in and hit your paper. I've seen streaky kind of lens flary looking things um, where you'll have light leaking in from somewhere. And so if, if you get anything but a pure white test, you need to look at your box and try to discover where the light is leaking through. And at that point, we can take additional measures to, you know, we cover the outside of this with black. Again, we could completely electrical tape it. If we're getting a leak through a crack, sometimes you can electrical tape. Um, once you install your paper and you're still in the dark, you can tape around the edges to make sure that this won't allow any light in. That's how you make a pinhole camera.